Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For God truly is good. He truly is wonderful. He is magnificent. And we thank him. Y'all have to excuse me. I am just truly excited about what God is doing. Hallelujah. In our lives this morning. Hallelujah. Because God is just so great and he's so awesome, um, not just because he can do things for us, but just because he is God and God by himself. And we truly honor him. We thank him for everything that he has done. Listen, I am youth pastor Brantley, Maurice Brantley at the Pages of Life Christian Worship Center in Swainsboro, Georgia. And I am so glad that you decided to join in with us this morning. Hallelujah for the word of God and to worship with us through the word and worship with us to what God is going to tell us and say to us this morning. I can't go any further without giving honor to my leaders, to the awesome, the senior pastor of the Pages of Life Christian Worship Center, Pastor Marcellus Hanna. I honor you, Pastor Hanna. And to his lovely wife, the elect lady of the house, evangelist Shartane Hannah. I give honor to you as well. And to all of you, my father's children and to my ministry. And you all may see it on my t-shirt <laughs> into the youth ministry 2Y4C. What's up? I miss you guys. And I, you guys are growing. You guys are sprouting up. You are growing in God. And I'm so excited and so happy for you to shout out to my ministry, to the youth ministry for the things that God is getting ready to do for the things that God is doing now presently in your life and in the lives um, of everyone um, at Pages that makes up Pages. So we honor God. And so we're not going to prolong any time because this word, I believe this word is real good, y'all. This word is real good. I know it's real good. Why? Because he gave it to me first. Right. So I know it's good. So we're going to go to the word of God. We're going to Esther chapter four this morning. Oh, Esther chapter four. And we're going to go to verse number beginning at verse 13 and this is what um this is what it says esther 4 and 13 and it says this then mordecai commanded to answer esther think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the jews for if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall the enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place, but thou shalt, but thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Listen, for such a time as this. Then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. Go and gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan and fast ye for me, neither eat nor drink three days, or night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise. And so will I go into unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we honor you. God, we thank you. God, for who you are, oh God, and for what you are going to do, God. We ask, oh God, that you bless the word, oh God, which is already blessed, oh God, but bless it even more for us, oh God, so that we may partake of it, oh God, and digest it. Hallelujah, oh God. And not only that, oh God, but give this word to someone in need in the name of Jesus, God. So we honor you. We give your name, glory, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to talk from a subject this morning. He's not done yet. Listen, he's not done yet. I just need you to put that in the comments. He's not done yet. If you're sitting in the house with someone, tell them he's not done yet. If you if, if you can ride him in the car, listen, I do what I do. Roll down the window and say and yell out, hey, he's not done yet. Amen. So we're looking right here. So during this time, so it, it just go back a little bit in the in the in the text and in the scripture. Um, the king um, Xerxes had become drunk on wine and commanded that his wife at the time, Queen Vashanti, um, to come out before everyone to show how beautiful she was. He wanted to put her on display. He wanted her, um, everyone to see, you know, that she was the most um, beautiful um, woman in, in, in the kingdom, in, in, in the land. But she refused to do so because she said, listen, I'm not going to be paraded around um, as such. So the king got very angry um, and he felt very disrespected and disregard for his request that he had her banished um, from the kingdom. So then the king called for a nationwide um, beauty pageant. 
he's like, listen, he, he needed a new wife, you know, his, 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 um, his attendants, you know, help him with this needed. He needed a new wife during this time to, um, find someone else that he can call queen. So then there came this Jewish woman. Uh, there's this Jewish woman amongst the young ladies now. Well, came this Jewish woman named Esther, um, who was taken to the tower with these other women and not just the tower that, you know, Hey, we taking them and we're locking them up. No, this is a tower that they went to that was a nice place that they went to as a place for them to uh, mingle with each other and just mingle there until such time came for them to come before um, the king. So Esther's cousin Mordecai had taken, um, um, was taken, was taken there and taken in by Mordecai and Esther was raised there as his own after her parents had died. Um, and so a man named Haggai was put in charge for preparing women for meeting the king and Esther won the beauty of Haggai. She won the beauty and she gave and was given special attention because she was the most beautiful as the, she was most beautiful before any, you know, before any of the other women. Um, and so let's pause right there. And, and I just want to let you know that when you commit to a life of going after God, um, that he will allow those things that you thought would not happen to become present in your life. Because listen, Esther had, um, found favor in Hagar. Because of her beauty. But not only that, I believe it was because of her willingness and her commitment unto God. Because, um, because of the, the, the things that she talked to God about and because of the, 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 the way that she labored before God, um, all of the favor, um, was now, um, in her court. It was now time um, for her to be um, put, not put on display, but it was time for her to be known, to be recognized in that. And, and Proverbs 3 and 4 tells us that so shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and men. So we find favor with man. Esther found favor with Man, uh, you know, if you if you if you don't like the enemy and you're going to put him to shame, I believe I dare you to put in the comments. I have favor with man. I have favor with man. And so Esther was careful, however, not to tell of her nationality as Mordecai had warned her. Listen, she could not disclose her identity, not just because Mordecai instructed her to do so. Watch this. But because she could not reveal the plans of the Lord too soon. Ah, see, you have to be careful that you don't run your mouth about what's getting ready to happen in your life. Listen, if I can say this and not be disrespectful to you guys, shut up. Keep your mouth closed because you cannot reveal that what God is about to do in your life because it's too soon. You can't run your mouth. You have to wait until the Lord instructs you to talk about it. That the Bible even tells us in James 1 and 19, he says, Wherefore, my brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak and slow unto anger. So you got to keep your mouth closed in this season about what God is getting ready to do in your life until he tells you to what? To talk about it. See, you can't run your mouth to everybody. You can't run your mouth to every Dick, John and Harry, to every Sally and Sue and Sarah. You can't run your mouth to them because they may have your best interest on the outside. But behind closed doors or when your back is turned, they could be sabotaging you. You have to be careful. That is why it is good to have the spirit of discernment in this season, but not just in this season, but every day in your life. You should be asking God, Lord, strengthen my discernment today. Strengthen my eyesight today so that I can see those things that the physical cannot see because you do realize that you got to look beyond your physical sight but you got to look beyond you got to look in the spirit you got to look there so when it was Esther's turn to come before the king he immediately found that she was the most attractive and beautiful woman and he placed the royal crown on her head and he named her at that banquet. He named her queen. Listen, she found favor not only with Haggai, who is the, the king's attendant right now, but she went ahead and her favor allowed her become queen status. So her status quickly changed from just being a Jewish woman to now being queen in the land. My God. So her, her status changed because of her favor that she has with man. 
So then Esther, but she continued to hide her background as um, she was instructed to do so because it will be dangerous during that time. It was dangerous for um, them to know of this Jewish woman. So, but watch this though. Watch this about this. So let's talk. Let me, let me, let me talk to you just for a moment. So not only does, not only do you know, but your leader knows, but not only does your leader know and you know, but the enemy know, the enemy knows. He knows that if you fulfill what God has for you, then you're going to be a threat to his kingdom. So what is he going to do? He is going to send every distraction your way to get you to talk about the vision, to get you to talk about the things that God is about to do in your life. So, so just as Esther had to hide her, 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 her identity or hide the plans of the Lord, uh, um, you're going to have to do the same thing. Even when the distraction comes, even when it comes before you, you're still going to have to hide that from the enemy. You're going to hide that from people. You're going to hide that from everybody and everywhere because if not, then you will find yourself in a dangerous place. You will find yourself in a, in a place where the enemy finds out what's going on and then he is going to sabotage the plans of the enemy. The plans of God. But listen here, but the word of God tells us that when the enemy comes in like a flood, listen now, the spirit of God shall lift up a standard against him. So know that God is not done yet. Listen, you ought to put that in the comments that God is not done. Um, he's not done yet. Amen. So. Now that we know that God is not done yet, we know that there is still time to do what God is calling us to do. But this is what we have to do. And this is something that, that I found that is so profound that we must maintain our position so that we can fulfill the things of God. Listen, in other words, you can't get out of place. You can't get out of character in this season. You cannot get out of yourself in this season. But you must remain humble and you must remain in the place where God is calling you to. But you can't get up too early. Listen, you can't move too quickly. You got to maintain where you are so you can hear God at such a time as this. You can hear God in this place because if you move too quickly, if you get up from your position too quickly, you can easily miss what God is saying to you in this season. Listen, I'm trying to help someone this uh, trying to help somebody right now. Esther couldn't just go in and take over or even start talking about her plans that she had or the things that she wanted to do because she had only just arrived. And guess what? She had to scope out the scene and to hear God to determine what her next move was going to be. So she couldn't just go in there and just start ah, and just started doing things. But she had to ensure that she was going to. Uh, 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 make it in, in, in such a, in, in so many words. She had to make sure that she was going to be in that place with God. So listen. So one night when Mordecai was sitting by the king, we're fast forward a little bit, sitting at the king's gate. He overheard two guards talking about trying to assassinate King, um, um, King Xerxes. So Mordecai told Queen Esther of the plan and Esther told the king to give credit to Mordecai for overhearing the plans. The two guards um, were hanged just because of that. Isn't it so funny that even when the enemy plots against you, God always has someone looking out for you on your behalf. So even when the enemy has coming in like a fuck, God's lifting up that standard, right? So he has somebody looking out um, for, he has somebody looking out for you. Isaiah 41 and 10 says, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with my right hand of righteousness. Listen, God is not done yet. Even though we've came up to this point, God's still not done. So this time Mordecai then refused 
to bow down to Haman. So now Haman came and is now in the picture. He is one of the king's royal, uh, uh, the highest of all nobles. And so when you see him, you're supposed to bow. But, 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 but Mordecai says, no, I'm not going to bow to him. I'm not, I'm refusing to bow down. And Haman became very angry about this and he did not like this. And so then not only did he become angry, but he found out that Mordecai was a Jew. So he became so angry that he began to plot to kill not only just Mordecai, but let's let, let's kill the whole nation. Let's kill the whole nation. So then he convinced the king to say, let's kill everybody because they are in opposition of your ruling. The king, they're in opposition of your ruling. So the king says, you know what? Go ahead and set the date up. Let's do it. Let's kill all the Jews. So even when the enemy is set out to kill you. Ah, you that mansa. That even when the enemy is sent out to kill you, you should still be able to say, I still believe God. So I still believe God, even though the enemy is trying to come against my life, I still believe God. Even though the enemy is trying to come against my finances, guess what? I still believe God. Even when the enemy is trying to come against my health, I still believe God. So what, ah, oh my, I see, I hear you, God. So even when the enemy, um, what the enemy meant to kill you, God is going to turn it around and he's going to use it as your footstool. Y'all know what the word says. It says that he will make the enemy your footstool. So I come to let you know that to get ready because the turnaround is beginning to happen. It's about to happen. It's already happening that in the last 45 days that we have in 2022, listen, you should still be able to say that I still believe God and God is going to shake up some stuff in these last 45 days. So get ready for a move of God because God is going to do the extra, the, the extreme in your life in these last 45 days if you still believe God. So back to our text, it says that Mordecai told King Esther about what, about the king. Um, was going to kill all the Jewish people. And so Esther feared for her life and she tried to avoid uh, his request to do something. But Mordecai again pleaded with the queen Esther to do whatever she had to do to save the people. So Esther responded by instructing all Jews to join her in fasting for three days and three nights. And she would do the same and then after she did that, she would approach the king. So listen, that's what, listen what Esther did. She set herself up for victory. In this season, you got to set yourself up for victory. Well, you know what? How do I set myself up for victory? Number one, you got to maintain your position. You got to maintain where you are in God. You have to maintain your place in the spirit. And you got to hear from God. And you got to listen to what he's saying. Because you got to get your spirit ready for what, um, is that, for what is about, that you are about to face. For the things that are, that, that knocked you out last round, it's not going to knock you out this round. So you got to maintain your position that this season is not going to be like the last season that you got to take a different approach this time so you got to number one maintain your season number two you got to stay in God's face you got to stay in his face you got to seek ye first I think Matthew 6 and 33 it tells us to seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness and all things shall be what added to you so you have to stay in the will of God you got to stay in his face to understand what's going to happen in this season because it's not going to be like a walking apart like it was last season or if your last season was hell it may be a little even more hellish this season so you got to maintain your position and stay in God's faith because I believe and I don't know if you don't believe it for yourself but I'm going to believe it for me that in these next 45 days of this year I'm coming out with the I'm coming out with victory and I believe that you are too I come on put it in the comments y'all know I'm a comment person put it in the comments today that I'm coming out with victory my God, hallelujah. Oh God, we, we, we oh, shut up, my. We honor you, God. So Esther went to King uh, Xerxes after three days of fasting and, and to the king and asked her, and the king asked her, what is your request? And King Esther asked the king that he and Haman would join her at a banquet that she had prepared the next day. And the king said that he will join her, but let your request be made known at the banquet. So Haman was still upset at this time with Mordecai and he went to set up a pole to kill Mordecai on the morning before the banquet. But something happened. Listen, listen, listen. So even when it seems like it's at the end, when you're at the end of the rope, then God begins to speak 
then God begins to uh, come in right on time, as my grandmother would say, that he comes right on time. So during that time, the king could not sleep that night. Um, I just want to, if I can speak prophetically just right here, just a little bit, I'm not going to go too deep with this thing, but just a little bit speak prophetically to you that God is getting ready to wake some of you up out of your sleep in the middle of the night in this next season, that this is not a sleeping season for you, but this is a season for you to stay alert for the next place that he's getting ready to take you. Okay. I don't know who that is for, but it's for about five of y'all that is watching uh, this morning that God is getting ready to take you to a next season, but it's going to require you to get up out of your sleep. In these, in, in, in this next place of your life. And so, uh, um, the king began to read a book about some, just some things that was going on during his reign, um, that happened. And he was reminded that Mordecai was the one that exposed the plot that was meant to kill the king. And so because of that, now the king has found favor, that Mordecai has found favor with the king. So then the king wanted to reward Mordecai for his good deeds. And he called Haman in to ask what should be done for a man who the king delights in. And Haman thought the king was talking about himself. So he gave the king everything that he think he should do for him. But in actuality, it was for Haman. It was for Mordecai. I'm sorry. So he, he, he just began to tell him about the extravagant gifts and the honor. And so Haman became so upset that... The king was giving all of this to Mordecai. So now the enemy is really mad at you because of everything that he thought. Um, he beat you in. The very thing that he thought was for that wasn't going to work in your favor. God has now highlighted that in your life. He has now allowed that to be something present in your life. Listen, listen. God has not forgotten about those things that you labored in. Oh, I, I felt that for someone. God has not forgotten about the things that you labored in, that you are laboring in now, that he's getting ready to reward you for that. He says, because you did what the Bible says and you press towards the place that he called you to do, um, you press toward the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. Yes, I understand that it was a rough place. It was a rough start and it was even hard at the ending. But they that wait, they that wait. Upon the Lord, your strength was renewed, wasn't it? He said, he, not only that, but you ascended like an eagle. You have ran and you didn't grow weary and you are walking and you never fainted. God is not done yet. God is not done. Oh my God, he is not done yet. So don't grow weary in this next place. So as they got to the banquet, I got to speed this up because I am running out of time. I'm running out of time. But as we as got to the banquet, and, um, the king asked for the request and then the Esther, um, re then Esther gave her request to the king, but then she boldly asked that she be spared from her be spared and the people be spared that Haman was plotting to kill all of the Jews for money. And then this made the enemy, uh, this made the king very upset, very mad. And so then um, the king, he feel, he was so upset about it that he had him hanged. He had Haman put on the very pole that he had set up for Mordecai. Listen, can I tell you this? The very thing that the enemy was going to kill you on has now become his death sentence. Whoo, shut up. The very thing that the enemy was going to kill you with is now turned around and now the enemy is dead. The enemy is defeated. Can I holler this out? Can I just uh, say this for you and for you and this next season and you and your family for this next season that the funeral has been canceled. My Oh, God, you ain't got to start making the funeral plans because God is now thrusting you and your family to, to a new place in him, to a new place forward in this next season because now the enemy is dead. The enemy is defeated. Oh my God. The enemy is defeated. But look here now, Queen Esther and Mordecai was now given Haman's estate. So now they were given these riches and given all of this extravagant things because what? The plan of the enemy was exposed. My God, my God. The plan of the enemy was exposed. So they were honored with royal garments and a decree was written to protect all Jews. So now, not only am I saved, not only is the queen of Mordecai saved, but now all of their descendants, all of their cousins, all of their family members are now saved. If I can prophesy this to you now, 
all of your family is safe. Listen, all of your uh, uh, your descendants are blessed and safe and, 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 and they can't and the enemy cannot harm them because what we are uh, uh, um, being thrust into a new place in God. Hallelujah. So now, now all the riches belong to you. God is going to take care of you there. But guess what? God is still not done yet. And we still believe him for what he is doing and for what he is about to do in this next season. Listen, I honor God today. I honor God for what he is doing in your life. And Listen, so even after all of that, after everything that 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 Queen Esther was going through and everything that and everything that um, Mordecai was enduring during that time and everything that the Jews had to endure during that time, they came out with victory. They set themselves up. Why? Because one, they maintained their position. Listen, they didn't move too quickly. Two, they stayed before the Lord. They they received the instructions from um from Queen Esther and they fasted. They prayed and they fasted. In this season, we're gonna have to fast, y'all. And I'm talking to myself too, because I was the first partaker. We gotta fast in this season for what God is getting ready to do. Listen, we gotta fast for the ministry. We gotta fast for our households. We gotta fast for hallelujah. We gotta fast for the world. We got to fast for our place in God. Amen. So they maintain their position. And they and they took heed to the instructions that God did. And then at the end, and so many things, so many times they say in, in in movies, they came in for the kill. They came in and they destroyed the enemy. They destroyed the plots. They destroyed the plans by the grace of God. And so we honor God for that. We honor God for what He has done. We honor God for what He is doing because God is still a great God. He's still an awesome and a mighty, mighty, mighty God. And we thank him. Come on, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we honor you for who you are. We thank you, God, because you are a good God. You are a merciful God. And we just give your name all the glory, honor, and praise for who you are. There's nobody. Nobody like you, oh God, and we thank you, oh God, that you're not done yet with us, oh God, that you still have much more, oh God, and we and we decree and declare that we still believe you. We believe you for the impossible. We believe you, oh God, hallelujah, for everything, oh God, that is about to transpire in our lives, oh God, and we're going to trust you, and we're going to lean and depend on you, hallelujah, to see us through in the name of Jesus. We give your name glory, and we give your name honor, for it is in your son Jesus Christ's name that we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. And we honor you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for what you're doing, oh God. Hallelujah, oh Lord. I thank you guys, hallelujah, for tuning in with Pages of Life this morning and hearing what the Lord had to say. Remember, God is not done. He's not done with you. He's not done with me. He's not done with the ministry. He has not, he has not forgotten about you. What concerns you concerns him. God bless you. I love y'all again. Youth 2i4c Youth Ministry. I love y'all so much. Love you, Pages. Love everyone that is watching. And as we say, always in Pages, turn the page. Get ready for a new place in God. Amen. Peace.